Hello, my name is Dylan with MLE Solutions. Uh, today, uh, we are going to be setting up an SFTP um, server from a storage account. Recently, I had a client, they needed to set up an SFTP server in order to get information to a new application that they were setting up. They had been having the issue for several months and it was a pretty quick fix. So I wanted to show it here. I also wanted to show up how to set up the automation account and we'll go ahead and uh, talk about some common issues as well as budgeting as well. So let's go ahead and hop right into it. Uh, so first part, uh, we're actually going to go to uh, storage accounts. You can come up to the search bar and type in storage or blob or really anything related for it to pop up. Uh, so let's go ahead and click on that. So once here, um, what we're gonna do is we're going to Click create. This is going to load in the configuration page. So we'll start out in the basics tab. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll choose the subscription that um, you're going to be using. Now, if you don't have a subscription set up, um, there's plenty of videos on how to set up a subscription, but it's essentially a billing account. Uh, so go ahead and you know select a subscription uh, that refers to your billing account, or uh, stop here and you know just pull up another Microsoft video on how to set up a subscription account. Uh, it's fairly simple. Uh, next thing you'll do is you'll choose your resource group. Now, if you don't have one, you can actually create a new one. Uh, we're going to be using just my base level one for this. Uh, next thing we'll need to do is name it. <clears throat> now, um, here, you are going to have to put lowercase. Uh, if I put uppercase, you'll see that the field can only contain lowercase letters and numbers, and it must be between 3 and 24 characters. So let's go ahead and uh, name our storage account. Now, for the region, um, I typically like to put it closest to me. Uh, but if you go into the actual budgeting tool, uh, you'll see that for uh, certain services, it's cheaper in some areas, uh, such as you know, East, Central, and West US. So really just go in and choose the best one for you. Uh, but I am going to choose the one that is closest to me, which for this example will be uh, Central US. <clears throat> uh, South Central US would also be close. So once we have that, we'll type the performance. Um, now, it's really up to you, what you need. Uh, for this example, we're just going to hit standard. Um, we'll talk about differences in this probably in a later video. Now, redundancy. Uh, redundancy, clicking on here, um, you can kind of see that we have LRS, GRS, ZRS, GZRS. So let's talk about a little bit what that means. Um, LRS, locally redundant systems, it means that it's stored in a data center. Um, the second one is actually ZRS, which means that it's stored uh, across a zone, so it has redundancy set up in place. Uh, so usually, you know, it would be you know two zones that they set it up or two regions across a region. Uh, the next one is GRS, which is globally redundant system or geo redundant system. Sorry. Uh, so this one is going to be across uh, secondary regions and have greater capabilities. And then the biggest one is GZRS, which is across, across the regions as well as across uh, secondary regions. So a little bit better uh, as you get, or a little bit higher as you get up. Uh, also increases the cost, so be careful. Um, you know, For this example, we'll choose the lowest cost one, which is the LRS. Now, I'm sure that there's better explanations for those. So, um, you know, definitely look into those if you want better explanations, but just for base level and for this tutorial, um, you know, that also suffice. <clears throat> so next thing we'll go to advanced. Uh, so we'll see here, um, you know, as far as these, you can just pretty much leave them uh, checked. Now, in order to set up the SFTP, what we'll actually need to do is enable the uh, hierarchical namespace. Uh, so we'll click that. And then you'll see that two things pop up here. So first one is enable SFTP. So as far as budgeting and as far as you know issues that people run into. So whenever you check this box, uh, since it's no longer in the 
beta. Uh, it now charges 30 cents, I believe it's per hour. Um, so over the course of an entire month, uh, it ends up like being $216, which is uh, can be fairly costly, uh, just depending. So the automation account that we're actually going to set up in another video, it'll show you how to automatically turn this on and off. But in this video, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and show you how to turn it on and off um, manually, uh, just to make sure that you can save that money and you know not have any surprise bills. So the next thing that we're going to do is choose the access tier, hot or cold, cool. Uh, so hot storage, um, it's the cheapest to access, but it costs the most to store. Cool is kind of the opposite. So it's cheaper to store, but it costs more to access. Um, I'm not going to go into too much more detail uh, besides that, but um, they do have you know, the budgeting and everything that you can check uh, to see exactly uh, what that is. And I will include um, the, you know, the Microsoft cost estimator, the budgeting tool, uh, in the link below. <clears throat> so uh, we can go ahead and go to networking. Uh, for this, we are going to leave... Um, Usually, so this one right here, first off, first thing you want, don't want to do is enable public access from all networks. Um, you know, you don't want just anyone to be able to access this. So you'll see that you can enable it from uh, virtual networks and IP addresses. This is typically uh, the one that you're going to do. And the reason for that is because you can actually say like specific uh, public IP facing uh, addresses and only those can access, which is typically the safest way. Uh, you can also do uh, you know, tokens in order for access that way. And then there's a couple of other um, you know, different ways as far as like virtual networks. Um, but for this video, we're not gonna go into setting up a virtual network. We will talk about how to get, um, or how to you know, input an IP address. So coming down here, uh, we can go ahead and go to data protection. Now, this right here is going to be um, kind of like the budgeting section. So if you enable soft delete, <clears throat> essentially what that means is, is it's going to leave it in kind of like an archive state uh, for a certain amount of days. So if it's an accidental delete, then you can get that information back. Now, it's going to store that as if it were, and I can't remember the exact um, like cost, but it does charge you for those seven days. So especially, you know, if they are large, um, you know, files, this is just something to be um, ca uh, cautious of. So the next thing is enable soft delete for containers. So you have blobs, containers, and share files. So blobs is like the actual information itself. Containers is like uh, the actual like um, I guess main folder. Uh, and then, you know, it kind of goes um, broader as you get uh, bigger. Now, I would recommend leaving the soft deletes on, uh, especially if you're setting this up for a business. Um, you know, you, you never really know, um, you know, someone may put something in there. It can be a super important Excel. And, you know, whenever you call your IT department, if this is not set up correctly, this is going to be... The issue where you know it's just lost, or you have to reach out to the original person who sent it and hope they have. So definitely important, and you know the actual storage itself is not very expensive. So you know definitely make sure uh, that you keep these on. Uh, now, if you're a little bit more technical and you don't really care, you have the files saved saved locally or in another file store uh, source. Uh, go ahead and just turn this off. Up to you. Um, we'll definitely save you as far as the budgeting goes. Uh, we'll leave them on, um, you know, just for the, for the example. So now we can go to encryption. So they have different encryption types. Um, definitely uh, see what you need as far as your scope. Uh, Microsoft Managed Keys is what will keep it here. We'll enable it for blobs and file stores. And then we will go to review. So. Uh, we see kind of the information itemized that we put in. Uh, so we'll go ahead and hit create. Now, this is going to take several minutes or maybe even seconds to deploy, just depending on how fast it's, uh, 
it spins up. But let's go ahead and give that just a second. So we kind of see the process a little bit of the video. Uh, now that the deployment successful, what we're going to go ahead and do is click go to resource. So we'll see that it automatically puts us in the storage account. Now, since we did enable the SFTP, the first thing that we're going to want to do uh, while we're setting up the rest of the uh, accounts and IP configuration is um, to turn that off. So on the left-hand side, you get kind of an overview of everything. What we'll do is we'll go down to settings and hit SFTP. Sorry, it's going a little bit slower than usual just because of the screen share. So first thing you see up here is uh, add local user, disable SFTP, disable local users and refresh. So we want to disable the SFTP. So that was successful. So you can come into the same area to enable it. Um, the reason, you know, the main reason we talked about earlier is at 30 cents an hour. You know, $216 is not an issue for you to have full availability for the month. Uh, it is the 216 you know, plus, um, you know, any storage fees. And you would need to check current rates just because that could change from the time that this video comes out. Uh, but if that's not an issue for you, then leave it off. You know, it, it's uh, it's just the dollar amount. Uh, you know, if the high availability matters to you, that's fine. But, you know, just a budgeting source. So now uh, what we're going to do is we're going to add our users uh, to the SFTP. So the users who can access this, um, we're going to have to add their IP addresses as well. Now, uh, so what we'll do is we'll click Add Local User. Wait for that to load. Sorry about that. And we'll come back to this since it's taking a little bit longer, give it some time. All right, so the next thing we'll do is set up like life cycle, life cycle management, uh, everything like that. So you'll come here. Uh, this is basically just going to be um, you know, basically how often you want to delete everything um, you know, in your blobs. Now, you'll add the rules uh, as to do it. It'll be uh, blob deletion. So you'll say either, um, you know, apply rule to blob in your storage account or limit to blobs and filters. Now, you'll want to leave it as base blobs, uh, and then you'll go to the actual base blobs. I'll enter the rule name. So just uh, we'll do saw or hot to arc. So we'll do, you can either choose last modified or created. So it's either based off of whatever the file was created or whatever was last modified. Now, just because a lot of the scope is whenever the document's created, uploaded, you're gonna have another uh, person usually download that. So as far as this, the created is usually fine. 
Now, this is, value right here is days. So right, right here, I recommend you know 14 days to move to archive. And then you can also do additional. So say you know the 14 days and said you wanted to move it to cool, right? Which has a different um, charge in the, in the hot. And then also it has a different charge in the archive. So now let's say, okay, well now, you know, if it is last modified, so you know, last modified created. So if it's created within 14 days, we'll move it to cool. So now we'll do a last modified. And then we'll do say 30 days to move to archive. And then we'll do one final one that if last modified is more than 90 days, then we'll delete the block. So this right here would be a full you know life cycle management of the blobs, the actual files and the storage. You don't have to set this up. It's just uh, there to keep it from getting out of hand. Uh, so, you know, we'll go ahead and kind of click out of that uh, just because, you know, like I said, it's really not needed if, uh, you know, you're going in there, keeping the information, using it as a repository or anything like that. So now, um, you know, back here, uh, we can create our access keys. That's not something that we're going to do in this video, but just you know it's here. Uh, we have encryption, another thing that you can do uh, right here, just depending on uh, encryption requirements. Now, the last thing we're going to do in this video is the IP addresses. So we'll come down to, I think it's network. Let's see. Network. There we go. Consultation with MLE Solutions. Uh, we can go ahead and walk you through how to set this up. Um, or we can help you 